zombies in this fallen world pretending to not see the truth, pretending to not know that there is a God. You know, the Bible it says that we are all without an excuse to believe that we have a creator. We look at these buildings, we look at these buses and these museums, they have builders, correct? So that means that everything that has been built has been built by someone. So therefore, the person that built your life, the person that built this world, created it, spoke it into existence, his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to build a relationship with you as well. But some of us, we get so prideful and we turn away from God because we think that our way is the right way. But the Bible says in Proverbs that there's a way that seems right to a man in his mind, but it leads to destruction. God wants you to turn to him today. He wants you to confess that he's your Lord and your Savior so that you can have a relationship with him and you can live for eternal life. Now, most of us are dying prematurely. We see now than ever, more now than ever that kids and young adults are getting sicknesses, chronic sicknesses, and we know that it comes from the food and the environment and so on. We can go into science later, but it also comes from sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So as we willfully sin and we live a life without the Lord Jesus Christ, we are getting closer to premature and eternal death. He wants us to change our ways, he wants us to change our minds, and he wants us to give our lives to him because there's no other thing, nor other person that can satisfy us. We've tried everything else. We've tried the self-help books, we've tried the positive thinking, we've tried Islam and all these other religions and other things and technology and education. We've tried so much, healthy eating. But have we ever tried Jesus Christ? The Bible says, that if we give our lives to him, that we will have everlasting life. Now, when we surrender to God, we can't be holding on to things from this world. We can't be holding on to pornography. We can't be holding on to drunkenness. We can't be holding on to homosexuality and abortion and murder and shame and guilt. We have to give that all up to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you, he wants your soul, he wants your heart, he wants your mind, he wants all that you are because at the end of the day, he created you, right? And how would a, a parent feel that was estranged from his child? Now, for those that are parents, you wouldn't feel too happy if your child was separated from you. That's how God feels about you who have been separated from him through sin. He wants you to be reconciled back to him. And the only way to be reconciled back to God is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's not through Allah. It's not through your own emotions and feelings. It's not through anything besides Jesus. And for those that would like to confront me about that, I'm a very respectful person. I would love for you to talk on the mic and share your beliefs, but I believe that Jesus Christ is the one true God and that we can only go to heaven through him. Now, if you believe something else, you can definitely confront me about it. You can definitely say something. You can definitely showcase your, your education or your philosophies, but I guarantee that the Lord Jesus will prove that you need him in your life. He'll prove that you're a sinner in need of a savior. He'll prove that you're one that has fallen to the ways of the world and you need grace to get back up. The fact that we're breathing right now is because of grace. It's because God breathed his breath of life into us, making us living souls. But when we pervert God's ways and we turn to ways of man and ways of the world, then we embrace the spirit of death. We encounter doctrines of demons. Why do you think that the new teaching out nowadays is say let people do whatever they want if it doesn't bother you? Well, this is the thing. Whatever you do is going to have an effect on those around you because you're a part of a community. And the Bible says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. So what that means is if you're endorsing drag queens coming into schools, then people are going to see you that are confused and they may not know anything and they'll start following after your evil deeds. And then it's a chain effect. It's a domino effect. So we want people speaking in truth. We want them exposed to the truth. And that truth is found in the Bible. It's found in Jesus Christ. It's found in the mighty counselor, the wonderful counselor. Many of you have been going through afflictions in the mind and in the brain and even in the body. But Jesus Christ says that he wants to heal you. Jesus Christ says that he wants to make you whole. Things that have been broken, stolen in your life. Jesus, he can rekindle them. He can rebuild them. He can restore you to who he's designed you to be.
because today we waste a lot of time with news outlets. We waste a lot of time trying to find our own way in life when we just have to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. We keep trying all these different things. We keep trying all these different ideas, but don't we see that they keep leading to death? And then we get so weary that we start supporting sin. We start supporting drag queens in schools. We say, oh, just let them do whatever they want to do. It's not hurting you. It's hurting your kids. And the thing is, you say, oh, well, it's not my kid that's there. Well, your kid is going to be exposed to that kid. And that kid can contaminate yours. And then that can lead to your child going into the world, going into your family, household, and bringing that filth in there. Nowadays, we have people that are scared. Even people that have to struggle with wrath and hatred and anger. You know, no one's in a rush to go anywhere. Let's just be real. Life is but a vapor. So we have on this highway people honking and getting aggressive. Why can't we just acknowledge that sometimes people, they either make mistakes or they can be going through a hard time. This brother seems to not be able to start his car, but you have a bunch of humans that will shout, love is love, and they're honking and honking and honking. Go, go, go. That's not love. That's not tolerance. That's disrespect. So when you walk around with the rainbow flag that you got from God, and you say love is love, no, you perverted that word and you made it into lust. You, and this is the thing with the Bible. The Bible says that love is kind, it's patient, it rejoices in truth and not iniquity. It's not easily angered. So if you're easily angered and you're in my face with the rainbow flag saying homosexuality this, homosexuality that, that's not love. Love is Jesus Christ. Love is God. And he will give you desires that will be of his. You know, so many people say, I was born homosexual. I was born this. I believe you, because we were born into sin. But just because we're born into sin, it doesn't mean we stay that way. That's why Jesus Christ, he says to be born again. And as you're born again, he will give you desires that will override your worldly desires and help you be holy as he is holy. Jesus is a helper. The reason most people don't come to God anymore is because they say, oh, I don't have time for that or I can't do that. Of course you can. But he can do it through you. He can help you. He can encourage you to live a life of righteousness and holiness. It's not of your own strength. So many people turn away from God because they think they have to do something. That is a false reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe in Islam, you may have to pray five times a day and hope that you can get into heaven. Or you have to do this and do that. But Jesus Christ wants you to surrender to him so that he can do the work through you. And he can help you through the trials of this life. I want you to know that salvation is not of works. You think I'm saved because I'm preaching on the streets? No, I'm saved because I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I confessed that I was a sinner in need of grace. I confessed that I was a sinner in need of a savior. And that's all that you have to do. You confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, he will become your God and he'll live in you and he'll help you to do all the things that please him. Don't get discouraged and say, I've been getting drunk all the time, I go out all the time. You're human. There's sin inside of you that's causing you to do that. Your fleshly body is designed to bring you to death. But if you go to the one who gives you life, he will help you to sustain your life and live an edifying life and that you would help others to experience what you experience. Praise God. God bless you. You're, you're a believer, I'm assuming. What's your testimony? You want to share it? Amen. Praise God. So I was born and raised into Christianity, but I had a real encounter with God when I was six years old. So my mother was diagnosed with cancer, leukemia. Um, when she got into the hospital, the doctor said that if she would have waited one more day, she would have died. And my mother was in very critical condition. Um, and at six years old, you know, I had been going to Sunday school. I had been hearing all these things about like, Jesus is love and all of these things. And you would think that like a six year old doesn't know any of this stuff. You would think that like, okay, cool. Like they're being, they're going to religion and they're going to Sunday school and all of that. But I knew, you know, I knew and I believed in everything that my parents had taught me. I, I knew that God was real. Amen. And I also knew that my mother could die. I also was very aware that she could have passed away and i was willing to accept that at six years old and i said god if you decide to take my mother's life i need you to give me the strength to overcome this i need you to give me 
the resilience to overcome this. And I also said, I mean, like, God, if you do heal my mother, I promise that I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. Amen. And I saw my mother literally dying before my eyes. I saw her come in and be all healthy and play around with us. And then her hair started falling out. I saw her energy just drain. I saw, you know, how she was waning before my eyes. And throughout all of this, I never lost faith because I knew that there had to be something greater because there had to be something else out there. Although the doctors were saying, you're gonna die in three months, you're gonna die in three weeks, you're, you're not gonna make it, your, your situation is impossible. I knew that it was possible. I knew that if I had faith the size of a mustard seed, I could move mountains. I knew the same God that had opened and parted the Red Sea is the same God today and is the same God that's living, despite how much we want to discredit it, despite how much we want to be like, no, it's not true. There hasn't been the existence of this and that, or Jesus isn't real. Although there's many historical accounts on Jesus, even Aristotle, historically speaking, talks about Jesus. And there's more accounts of Jesus Christ being and walking on the face of this earth than Alexander the Great. Amen. Amen. And so, I knew that there had to be something else, although the doctors were saying no. Mm -hmm. I knew that there had to be someone greater, although my human, although like our human strength is so limited, despite all the medical innovations and all of that. And so at six years old, I was praying. And that's why the Bible says, be like children. If you tell children that Santa Claus is real, we believe it. Mm -hmm. If you tell children that there's unicorns and things like that, we believe it. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, my parents had told me there was a God and I believed it. Wow. I believed it. And I saw the miraculous power of God move through my family. I saw the miraculous power of God move through my life. I saw the miraculous power of healing in my mother's life. Three months later, she had chemotherapy and everything. She's 100% cancer free. After three months, 100% cancer free. Now you cannot tell me that that is not the power of God. You cannot tell me that there is not a God existing and living today. Amen. And this is just one of many testimonies that I have of my family, of myself, and of the power of God. And and once again, I reiterate, the same God that parted the Red Sea, the same God that has delivered us from slavery, from captivity, is the same God that we serve today. Amen. And so that is my testimony, and that is why I believe in God, and that is why I am so passionate about God and the power that he has. And I agree with our fellow preacher where he was talking about, you don't have to have a checklist in order to come. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm this pitch perfect person and I don't do this and I don't drink and I don't smoke and I don't do X, Y, Z. You don't have to do those things. The Lord says, I come for the brokenhearted. He doesn't say, I come for those who are only perfect. He says, I come for those who are brokenhearted and all I want from you is a yes. I just want a yes from you. I don't want you to have all of your life together and circling back. That's why Jesus is king. That's why Jesus is real. Historically speaking, we've seen it. There's many accounts of him. But also, look at all the testimonies. Look at the truth that's around us. And that's that's my testimony as to why God is real. Woo! God, Jesus! That was amazing. I was not expecting to do any of that, but thank you. You're welcome. What's your name? Diana. Diana. Okay. God bless you. We'll be praying for you. Thank thank you you. for your boldness. Thank you.